We found their tracks and followed them, but they just disappeared. <laughs> they were there, in the desert, under the vultures, and you let them escape you. Escape? They vanished! Muhammad has stayed, only the weakest have gone. Weak or strong, they'll blacken our name. We're honest merchants. We buy and sell in good faith. We cannot afford scandal. Abyssinia. Amara, you're a friend of Anajashi the king? Yes. Can you use that friendship? I think I can bring them back. Yes. Abyssinia. Rise up, Amara. There is nothing you may ask for that we will not give. Lion of Judah, I... I don't know where to begin. You have our friendship. Begin there. Certain runaway slaves have escaped from us into your kingdom. Slaves go back? As you no doubt would return our slaves to us. There are, however, some free men among them. Rebels. Rebels. If there is disturbance in that Arabia, why am I not informed? They are rebels in religion. At one time or another, all religions were rebellions. The bodies of slaves are of the world and within our disposal. But as Jesus Christ is our shepherd, the souls of men are his sheep. These are Arabs who have betrayed the religion of their fathers. They follow a lunatic they call a prophet. But I cannot put souls into chains without hearing them. Stiff necks will hang them. Do you not bow to yourselves before your prophet? Muhammad is a man. We kneel only to God. Where are Muhammad's miracles, Jafar? If he were a prophet, he'd light the sky with miracles. Indeed, this is true. God has given his prophets the sign of miracles that we may recognize them. The miracle of Muhammad is the Holy Quran. A book! A book! Written by an illiterate, attributed to God. I think the emperor has heard enough. I'm mindful of Pentecost, when God sent down tongues of fire upon the heads of Christ's apostles, so they could speak the many languages of the world that they knew not before. But do such miracles happen in our time? I've heard enough. 
You've made a poor case. When we suffered persecution in Mecca, Muhammad told us, go to Abyssinia, the land of a righteous king, where no man is wronged. What they call persecution was fair punishment. Their disorder and their... Why right. did your prophet send you to me? Because you believe in the book of the one God as we do. He sent us because in your heart God will protect us. Talking with them is like drawing water from a mirage. But they've now laid a duty on me to listen to them, my friend. Go on. For years, we worshipped wood and stone, images of our own manufacture. We lived in ignorance of God. We had few earthly laws and no heavenly laws. The rich neglect the poor, and the natural pity of man, whereby he lifts his brother up when he has fallen, is described by them as upsetting social order. To this inhumanity, has come a man whom God chose. And in that we believe. You're overcome. I beg you to collect yourself. I speak of the messenger of God. Muhammad teaches us to worship one God, to speak truth, to love our neighbors as ourselves. To give charity. Even a smile can be charity. To protect women from misuse. To shelter orphans. And to turn away from gods of wood and stone. I cannot keep still and hear this blasphemy. We are an ancient civilization. To call our gods wood and stone is to speak ignorantly of them. The idol, the form, is not what we worship. But the spirit that resides within the form. I agree that idolatry is not always fully understood. Thank you. Now let me bring him back to the women. God made woman to be the proper companion of man. She is different, but equal. Equal! We buy them. Feed them, clothe them, use them, discard them. Women equal to us? <laughs> God created man from one male and one female. Ah, oh, you must respect in all women the womb that bore you. Why are your 300 gods so tongue-tied? Why, his only god is elephant. God has spoken to us before. Through Abraham. Noah, Moses, and through Jesus Christ. Why should we be so surprised that God speaks to us now through Muhammad? Who taught you those names? They are named in the Quran. I knew Muhammad when he was an orphan minding sheep. And we knew Christ as a carpenter. What Christ says, and what your Muhammad says, is like two rays from the same lamp. They are lying to you. They deny Christ. You worship three gods, they say. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they say. What do you say of Christ? They say God cannot have a son. Christ is not the Son of God. Speak to me of Christ. We say of Christ what our prophet has taught us. That God cast his Holy Spirit into the womb of a virgin named Mary. And that she conceived Christ, the apostle of God. The apostle, he says, not the son, not the son. What does your miracle, your Quran, say of the birth of our dear Lord Jesus Christ? May I relate the words? Come closer to me. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Relate in the book the story of Mary, how she withdrew from her family to a place in the east, how we sent to her our angel Gabriel, who said, 
I am a messenger from your God to announce the birth of a holy son to you. She said, How shall I, Mary, have a son when no man has touched me? And Gabriel replied, For your Lord says, It will happen. We appoint him as a sign unto man and a mercy from us. It is a thing ordained. between us and you is no thicker than this line. Not for a mountain of gold will I give them up to you. You may live in Abyssinia in peace for as long as you wish. May God's blessings be upon you on your return. Intolerable. Muhammad disturbs even our foreign alliances. Very well. We will make a foreigner of him. Abu Talib has his arms around him. Very well. We will throw uncle and nephew out. In one bundle, his whole family out. We will expel them from ourselves. No merchant may trade with them. No land remain to them. No roof shelter them. No baker bake for them. No woman marry them. Until they renounce, they can't. <laughs> These were the worst years of Muhammad's life. For three years they suffered the hunger, thirst, cruelty of the open desert. But the year of grief was still to come when Khadija, Muhammad's wife for 24 years, died. When Abu Talib, his old protector, died. With his last breath, Abu Talib tried again to reconcile Mecca and Mohammed. He never asked more from you than one word. One, one God. If it were only a question of one word, we would have given him ten words. But the word he wants would dethrone all the gods. Afraid even to hear him. With the death of his uncle. Muhammad had now lost all protection. He was no longer safe in Mecca. Alone with Zaid, 
his adopted son, he went to the hillside town of Taif. He asked to be taken in, to be allowed to preach. But the children of Taif were turned loose to stone him back into the desert. called this the bitterest day of his life. Then, miraculously, when Mohammed's mission seemed to have failed, his entire situation changed. A deputation from the rich but self-destroying city of Medina met him by night at the rocks of Aqaba, asking him to come to them, to stand between their factions, to mediate their continual quarrels and civil wars. Mohammed agreed, provided they gave him a pledge that they worship the one.